What was your life like before meeting Jesus Christ? Um, I have to say my life was miserable. Uh, it was full of anxiety, doubt, fear. Um, I was like a dog chasing my tail, you know. I was never moving forward. I felt, I really, even though I didn't know Jesus, I felt um, like I take three steps forward in my life and then I take five steps back. So I was never making progress. Um, if you want to go back to the Israelites, I felt like them, you know, going round and round and never finding the promised land. Um, it was miserable, you know, as we know the enemy uh, in John 10:10 it says he comes nothing but to kill, steal and to destroy. And all my life the enemy has been stealing from me relationships, jobs, my health, uh, destroying things, you know. Uh, and his end game was to kill me. But with the grace of God, you know, that didn't happen. And I truly believe it was my grandmother who was fasting and praying for me. She fasted every Friday and she prayed diligently for me because she knew the lifestyle I lived. And um, if it wasn't for her prayers, I truly believe I'd be dead. Um, I've been through a lot. I was addicted to um, cocaine for about 12 to 13 years. And then after that, I got on the ice for about 18 years. Uh, I was an alcoholic all my life. Um, I drank about a bottle of Jack Daniels a day, a whole big 750 mil bottle. And uh, with the grace of God, my liver went bad and, and Jesus healed my liver too, you know. He, he is the healer. And um, just so many things has happened to me uh, in the carnage that I was involved in, you know, living the gang life, selling drugs. Um, a lot of my friends have been killed under the age of 25, you know, they get shot. And in California, we don't have places to throw them so would you, they just put them in the trunk of their car you know it's very sad um, I've been shot at three times personally um, two from very close range and uh, with the grace of God the bullets missed me I always used to think when I didn't know Jesus that it was um, I used to be a hundred meter sprinter before so I thought my sprinting skills got me away but when I met Jesus Jesus the Holy Spirit told me that the angels moved the bullets out of me I actually seen the bullets going by me you know I heard them and I thought it was me but no it was the mighty angels um, being sent because of my grandmother's prayer and fasting in my life so my life was just miserable you know just Oh, I just, I was self-medicating myself, trying to get a shake off anxiety and, and um, trying to find the peace, you know, that Jesus promises us. But I, I, I was looking at all the wrong places and just finding temporary peace through the drugs and alcohol and through the sex and all the other things that goes along with it. Um, never getting satisfaction, you know. Without Jesus, my life was just miserable, miserable. Yeah. How did you meet Jesus Christ? I met Jesus Christ, I'll have to give it back again to my grandmother because in the Bible it says, teach your child in my ways and when they get old, they will, if they depart, they will come back. And my grandmother diligently took me to Sunday school, you know, and after Sunday school, I'd sit in this church service as well. And um, by the time I was 13, I decided church wasn't for me. I really thought Jesus was fake and he was phony, he was not real. So I walked away from the church. Um, by the time I was 21, my life became very hectic. I lived in a gang neighborhood, you know, like just crazy things happening, people dying around me. So I thought that, um, I, I not thought, I knew there's a God. I always knew there's a God. So I try to do it like the Muslim way or the Jewish way. Like I go straight to the Father and pray to Him, uh, bypassing Jesus, not knowing that Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Uh, in saying that, God in His grace and mercy, He still look out for me, you know, like He didn't let me die. Um, and I'd, <laughs> I'd pray to God, like sometimes I'd do so much cocaine, I felt like I was going to die, my heart was going to explode. I'd be on my knees praying to God, not knowing who Jesus is, and God would still have mercy on me. But without the Holy Spirit, I'd do the same thing again the next day, you know. Uh, uh, basically, I was mocking what Jesus did on the cross. I did not know who Jesus was. Um, and I thank the Lord that... Um, <laughs> um, that my grandmother teaching me in God's ways, you know, um, and then it all started making sense to me that there is a higher power and, and from praying for him, praying to God, um, my life started changing slowly but surely. And it all, when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, that's when it all took a turn. Uh, someone was telling me, it's like, um, it's like when I was praying to God and all the other people praying, advocating for me it was like a bank account I had in heaven 
with the savings account but i didn't have the pin number to it for my blessings and, and the day i received jesus christ as my personal lord and savior it's like i got a pin number now and now my blessings start coming down not only my blessings but jesus said before he left uh, he told his disciples you know these are mighty men of god already casting out demons laying hands on the sick and doing so much things uh following jesus and he said hold on i will not leave you as orphans uh, i will send the holy spirit and um oh i tell you thank you jesus for sending me the holy spirit because without the holy spirit i cannot function we know that jesus is on the right hand of the father sitting down uh, but the holy spirit when i met him some six years ago um as his name is his title he's our helper and comforter and i tell you i was a broken down in spirit broken hearted person you know when i met jesus and jesus sent the holy spirit that he may help me and comfort me and then as he like a baby would get helped and comforted he'd cradle me and then as i started walking he started teaching me you know he started counseling me uh, he started leading me right to jesus and, and now i thank you holy spirit that i've come to a level where he convicts me um there's a big difference in condemnation and conviction the devil loves to condemn us of look how you used to be and that's who you are but the Holy Spirit when he comes he con he convicts me so I don't go back to my vomit you know he'll show me things how I used to be so I don't go back so I really without the Holy Spirit I cannot function on this earth and I we all need the Holy Spirit in our lives you know to help us and lead us and it's such a powerful um such a powerful entity of the Trinity the Holy Spirit yes how did your life change after meeting Jesus Christ? Uh, my life has changed dramatically, like I was telling you earlier. Since I met Jesus Christ, uh, He did not leave me nor forsake me. He sent me the Holy Spirit to help me to walk this earth. Um, and I cannot, and we work on the Great Commission together with the Holy Spirit that lives within us is greater than the world and the mighty angels working together with us. So my life has changed drastically. Um, I was a believer before and now I'm a disciple. And there's a big difference. A believer believes in John 3.16. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. They do have a one-way ticket to heaven, which is very nice and good. Uh, but thank to the Holy Spirit I've ta he's taken me to another level from a believer to a disciple and a disciple works in the Great Commission to save souls because uh, as Solomon says a wise man saves souls so I, I really have this passion in me because uh, being a ex drug addict being an alcoholic in and out of jail um, there's so much carnage here in, in Logan area you know where we live uh, there's so much drugs infiltrating the community uh, children are getting hooked on so I have this passion that I'm out on the streets as often as I can you know to tell people the good news uh to 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 preach the good news to the people you know to all creatures uh, as jesus said go and baptize all nations so uh, i thank the lord that i'm really connected with a good network of people that the holy spirit is putting together uh, many mighty men and women of god uh, that are out there on the streets you know where uh, it's lovely to praise god uh in the four walls of the church um but uh, it's so beautiful to go take the, take the gospel to the streets, you know, because a lot of these people will never come into a church. Um, and I just wanted to say, we all know John 3.16, but I just wanted to say John 3.17, God did not send His Son to condemn the world, but to save the world. Uh, we need to really realize this, you know, that um, Jesus did not come to condemn us, but to save us. So whatever the enemy is putting in your head, um, you have to be very careful with these words, you know, the thoughts that come. Uh, we know one of them is our thought and the other two are either from God or the enemy. So without the Holy Spirit, as 1 Corinthians 12 um, breaks down the uh, 12 gifts, uh, I'm sorry, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we need this uh, really in these last days, you know, we need discernment so we can distinguish uh, what spirits are trying to infiltrate our minds and um, also um, we need word of knowledge on people so people don't deceive us as we know the enemy is full of um, schemes traps and wiles and um, as I was saying, saying earlier I had no spiritual warfare in me so I had to go through the fire I had to be purged uh, and as ambassadors of Christ when we're out here we are in a spiritual battle um, and Ephesians 6 10 says therefore put on the full armor of God 
Cause we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers in dark places, in heavenly places. So the armor of God is very important as not only as um, ambassadors for Christ, but as Christians itself, because we have a target on our back. Uh, the enemy wants to, you know, put his fiery darts and arrows always towards us. And without putting the armor of God, you know, it is not possible for us to win. And um, Ephesians 6.10 will break down the armor. You know, we put on the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness, uh, the belt of truth, the boots of the gospel of peace, and of course, the shield of faith, because faith comes from hearing the word. And of course, our sword of the spirit, which slices and dices the enemy, which is sharper than any two-edged sword, which is the word of God. So I really um, recommend each and every one of you, not only to read your Bible, but also to get into prayer and make sure you have a relationship with Jesus because Jesus loves us so much, we have to love him back. And that's how a relationship starts with Jesus, is when we love him back. How did you stop using drugs? How? Just, well, the Holy Spirit came in my life and um, uh, I've been off drugs for like almost six, seven years now. And believe it or not, the thought just came last month. The thought never stops. The, the enemy keeps bringing the thought. Sometimes it's just me even, not even the enemy. But I'm able to stand my ground and I'm able to keep my eyes on Jesus. It's almost like going back to when Peter got off the boat and the minute he took his eyes off Jesus, the circumstances, the waves, the wind, he started going sinking, you know. So if I keep my eyes off Jesus, I will 100% sink and I will fall. So the key to it all is don't take your eyes off Jesus. And that's how I walk. I keep my eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of my salvation. That is the only way. When you met Jesus Christ at the first time, how did you feel? I felt so good. I felt so good regarding the circumstances I was going through. My whole world was crashing around me. And Jesus said, I will give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. And I used to read that always and, and even pray that, but I never experienced that eh? until that day. It's like, wow, it's like from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. It's like, it's, oh, another way to describe it would be like if I came out of a, uh, a nice hot tub with a full body massage, that, that, that comfortable, relaxed feeling, you know? It's just so hard to explain, but those that know Jesus' peace know what I'm talking about. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to go back to your old life? Oh, never again, never again, never again. Um, I, 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 I had scales on my so I didn't realize the way I was living, I could be in hellfire just like that. Because I, I didn't even think I'd make 25, you know? Uh, I, I could have I ended up in hell. So I, if it wasn't for my grandmother's prayer, so I just want to emphasize prayer is so powerful, people. If you have some family members, friends, someone who's out in the world, and you think there's no way, prayer is the way to bring him back. Because the angels fight on our behalf. Our warfare is not carnal, but <laughs> strong by pulling it out of strongholds. You know, and I truly believe that without prayer, I would not be here talking to you guys. Mm -hmm. Could you please tell me your church's mission? Um, my church is called um, Kingdom Advances International. And um, they're an amazing church. Um, they've taken the church out of the four walls. We do church in the parks. We do church in the streets a lot. And um, we, we are ambassadors of Christ, you know, out there saving souls. And uh, in the area of Woodridge, we're out there a lot, you know, in the streets evangelizing, not evangelizing, but bringing church to the streets where there's prostitutes, there's people addicted on drugs that um, actually come and sit with us, you know, and fellowship with us. And um, all we do, like Brother Paul said, that he sows Apollos waters, but the Father gives the increase. So we just work on the Great Commission. We continue to till, till the heart where it needs. Uh, and even in that department, Jesus said, I will turn a heart of rock back to a heart of flesh. So we just do our part, you know, and wait for God to give the increase. How do you keep your passion, strong faith, and a fire for Jesus Christ? 
Um, I personally, uh, me and my son, every day, uh, I got this strategy from a mighty man of God, Smith Wigglesworth, who actually used to bring people back to life. You know, I, I've casted out demons and done many other things, but I, in Jesus' name, I would love to bring some dead back to life. And Smith Wigglesworth's strategy is that he takes communion every day. Uh, as Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. So my son and I, not that we may boast, we may boast in Christ Jesus who strengthens us. We take communion uh, every day and it edifies it and it does something in us. Us. And we also get into the Word every day. We, we read the Word every day. It's like we need spiritual food as well. You know, we eat earthly food to survive, but we need spiritual food way more, which is the Word of God. So every day, you know, communion and taking in the Word, praying and having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to go. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Is there anything else you would like to share? Um, I would like to say never give up. Because uh, the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times and he gets back up. So if you fall and backslide and slip up, don't let the enemy um, have a foothold in your life. You know, get back up, pray, uh, repent. Uh, repent means turn from your sins. Uh, we do not continue repenting and doing the same things over and over again. That would be mocking the cross. So we we get up from our sins and we move forward, keeping our eye fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our salvation. That is the only way. Keep your eyes on Jesus and don't let the circumstances of the world bring you down. Uh, especially with this COVID going on, you know, um, there's many people, the, the media and many people put fear into people. Uh, but we as Christians, we do not walk by sight. We walk by faith. And um, God has not given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and most importantly, a sound mind. And please exercise that sound mind that the Holy Spirit gives us. Thank you. God bless you guys. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs>